Calling the joint hearing on the Committee on Human Services and Committee on Labor, Culture, and the Arts, 3 o'clock p.m. calendar. Um, present for Human Services is myself, and on remote we have Senator Misalucha, Senator Ocasio, and Senator Favela. Um, Chair? Well, for the Committee on Labor, Culture, and the Arts, we have um, myself. Um, as Chair, Senator uh, Keo Kalole and Senator Favela. Okay, this meeting, including the audio and video of remote participants, is being streamed live on YouTube. You will find links to viewing options for all Senate meetings on the live and on-demand video page of the legislature's website. The Zoom meeting and YouTube live stream event will include the following agenda, which is the 3 p.m. calendar. In the event, unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to major technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 3 p.m. March 25, room 225, and a public notice will be posted on the legislator's website. For the people participating remotely, all testifier audio will be muted and video disabled until shortly before it is your turn to testify. Although this particular calendar has only one bill on the agenda, we have a long day today with multiple agendas. So I request all testifiers to either rest on your written testimony or limit your testimony to two minutes. Okay, first up, HB 718HD1 relating to health requires the Department of Human Services to compile information regarding employers having employees to receive public assistance and to submit an annual report to the legislator on the 50 employers with the highest number of employees receiving public assistance. It requires the Department of Labor Industrial Relations to share employment data with the Department of Human Services. First up, um, the Department of Human Services, uh, MedQuest Division. I see Judy Moore Peterson. Hi, good afternoon, chairs. On behalf of the Department of Human Services, we stand on our written testimony offering comments. Thank you. Available for any questions. Okay, thank you. Next up, Department of Labor, Director Yusefkyo, comments. Okay, um, IT, we cannot hear Department of Labor, and it sounds like, he sounds like a chipmunk. Um, IT, can we fix his audio? Okay, um, we're going to get back to you until we figure out what's wrong with your audio. Okay, next up, um, Brian Black, Civil Beat Law Center, with comments. Uh, good afternoon, chairs, uh, members of the committee. Brian Black, Executive Director of the Civil Beat Law Center for Public. Um, just uh, the, the language in there about HIPAA is um, really is problematic given what um, seems to be the intent of the bill in terms of if you're looking for an annual report that has actual information about employers, then uh, HIPAA, the de-identification requirements in HIPAA require there to be a um, you, you can't go any more detailed than zip code, for example. Um, so, really, if you're if you're if you're trying to incorporate the HIPAA standards, it, it's it's going to be problematic in terms of how to implement that and everything. Well, at the same time, all you have to do is say, uh, if you're looking for employers, is uh, say don't include personally identifying information, which the bill already says, uh, without incorporating the HIPAA standards. And then it, it's, uh, it should give you what you want, the names of the employers without the employees or any further detailed information that would expose someone's, um, you know, the benefits that they receive or anything like that. I'm available for questions, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, no one else, and I will get back to the Department of Labor, having been approved to testify. Is anybody else wishing to testify on HB 718A? Seeing none, and I see um, written opposition from Melanie Crow. So let's go back to the Department of Labor. Hopefully, your audio works now. 
No. no. Um, I think you need to, okay. Are you, can you, just nod your head. Are you willing to rest on your um, written testimony? <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, any questions from members? Okay, um, seeing none, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna go into a breakout room recess for decision making. Recalling the um, agenda for the 3 p.m. calendar, joint human services, labor, culture, and the arts for decision making. For HB 718 HD1, Chair's recommendation is to defer to Chair on Labor, <laughs> Cultural, and the Arts decision. Please proceed, Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so it would be to pass with amendments. Uh, the amendments would be to amend section three to provide that um, this be beginning on or after January 1st, 2023, the DHS will compile data regarding employers having employees who receive public assistance. Um, we'll also clarify that the um, DHS shall submit its report prior to the convening of the 2024 regular session and that um, they will report on um, recipients of public assi assistance during the previous calendar rather than fiscal year. Uh, we'll also note in the committee report that um, DHS and DLIR will um, work together to um, modify the data sharing agreement and that um, the data compilation costs that were uh, noted in the testimony uh, must be requested in the next biennial budget. So, do you have any? Questions? Yeah, and you're going to remove all references to HIPAA. <coughs> yeah, that's the. Um, yeah, that's. <coughs> well, so removing. Uh, per right, several right, right. Exactly, the HIPAA part, but re retaining, re retaining the, the part in front of that. Right. Before that. Okay. Any questions, um, Committee on Human Services? Okay. Seeing none. Vice Chair for the vote, pass with amendments. Uh, chairs, okay. since I'm the Vice Chair of both committees, shall I take um, Human Services uh, first? And yes, and then we'll go uh, proceed directly to the Labor Committee. So the members and uh, so the recommendation for both chairs is to pass HB 718 with amendments as stated. And um, f for the members of Human Services, um, uh, we'll take the vote. Chair San, uh, San Buenaventura. Aye. Senator Harvos, aye. Senator Acasio. Aye. Senator Misa Lucha. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Uh, the recommendations adopted for the Committee on Human Services, for the Committee on Labor, Culture, and the Arts. Uh, same recommendation. Chair Taniguchi. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator Keoho Kalole. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. The recommendation is adopted for the Labor Committee as well. Okay. Thank you very much. And we are adjourned for the 3 o'clock calendar. Human Services, stick around. Calling the Committee on Human Services 310 calendar. Um, chair is going to note the prior uh, notice that this is being live streamed on YouTube. Any unlikely event that we have to abruptly end this year and due to major technical difficulties, the committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 3 p.m. March 25, room 225. 
the committee um, present is our uh, Vice Chair Leslie Hara, on remote are uh, Senators Ocasio and Ms. Salucha, and at one time was Senator Favela. Um, takes. First up, HB 1284, relating to Department of Human Services, requires health insurance providers that provide health benefits plans funded by the Hawaii Emergency Employer Union Health Benefits Trust Fund for the state Medicaid agency and providers that provide Medicare Advantage, Medicare Part C, health benefits plans to provide administrative data to the health analytics program in the Department of Human Services requires the health analytics program to develop an annual plan for the analysis, maintenance, and publication of collected all claims, all payer administrative data. First up, um, Department of Human Services, MedQuest Division in support, Judy. Hi, good afternoon, Judy Moore Peterson, MedQuest Administrator. On behalf of the Department of Human Services, we'd like to thank you for hearing this, uh, this bill. Uh, we are in uh, strong support of this bill uh, and I'm available for any questions. We're standing on our written testimony, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, next, there, no one else having registered to testify in for HB 1284, Derek Mizuno, Hawaii Employer Union Health Benefits Trust Fund provided written support. Anybody else wishing to testify on HB 1284? Members, any questions? Okay, moving on. Next up. HB 1237, relaying to the judiciary, clarifies the effective period of a temporary restraining order, protective order, or injunction for a minor may extend to a reasonable date after the minor has reached the age of 18. First up, um, testifying for Department of Prosecuting Attorney, Trisha Nakamatsu in support. Trisha? Okay. Chair, this is Dennis Gunn. I'm standing in for Trisha. Okay, please proceed. Uh, the Department of Prosecuting Attorney is in full support of this measure. We encounter situations frequently that involve minors who have TROs sought for them uh, by adults. And then when they um, turn 18, the courts typically do not allow the order to stay in effect, which forces the new adult to then seek uh, assistance from the court on their own, which is often very difficult as well as sometimes the courts require additional acts of violence, which may not have occurred simply because the offender is incarcerated. So we're asking that you support this measure. Um, we would find it extremely helpful and supportive of our victims. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Next, uh, um, Judith Clark, Hawaii Youth Services Network and support. Aloha, Chair. I'm Judith Clark, Executive Director of Hawaii Youth Services Network. And we are in full support of this bill. Um, the protective orders and injunctions expire on the 18th birthday, even if they were issued only a few days before. For example, a restraining order issued a week before the minor's 18th birthday would expire in one week, and the individual would have to go through the entire process again. Inevitably, there is a period of time when the person in need does not have this legal protection in place and is more vulnerable to harm. The process of seeking the restraining order, protective order, or injunction can be difficult and traumatic for young people. It also creates an additional unnecessary workload for an overloaded judicial system. Um, allowing these orders to uh, extend beyond the minor's 18th birthday will increase safety, reduce trauma, and increase the efficiency of the judicial system. Thank you for this opportunity to testify. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, nobody else having registered to testify um, on Zoom, those presenting Written testimony are Randall Platt for the Honolulu Police Department in support, and Tiffany, an individual in support. Anybody, uh, Tiffany Keiko Olani, excuse me, in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on HB 1237? 
Okay, seeing none. Members, any questions? Nope. Okay, thank you very much. We're moving on. Thank you. Seeing none. Okay, next up, HB 381, relating to fair housing reasonable accommodations, codifies the administrative rule de definition of assistance animal, clarifies the type of verification an individual may provide to substantiate a reasonable accommodation request for a specific assistance animal, specifies a position for vest or other distinguishing animal garment tag or registration document commonly purchased online and purporting to identify an animal as a service animal or assistance animal does not constitute valid verification of a disability related need for an assistance animal. Okay, first up, William Hoshijo testifying for Hawaii Civil Rights Commission in support. Hello, the chair and members, uh, Bill Hoshijo for the ACRC. We'll stand on our written testimony you know, uh, in support and we'll be available for comments. Okay, thank you very much. Nobody else having registered to testify by Zoom, those who are providing written testimony are DCAB, Kirby Shaw of Disability and Communications Access Board with comments, Debbie Jackson, Ali Interpreting Service LLC in support, Richard Emery for Associa in support, Nalan for Community Associations Institute with comments, and Ken Hiraki, Hawaii Association of Realtors in support. Members, any questions on HB 381 on our only witness here? Okay, seeing none, thank you very much, Bill Hoshija. We're moving on. Okay, next up, SCR 27, SR 16, requesting the Department of Human Services in coordination with Department of Health to collect data on lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer or questioning, pansexual, asexual, gender, non-conforming, and intersex youth who are under the supervision of the courts and the Hawaii Youth Correctional Facility. First up, Mark Patterson, Office of Youth Services and Support. Senator, they're not present. Okay, not present. Okay, next up. I see Michael Galoya for LGBT Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii in support. Please proceed. Good afternoon, Senators. Michael Galoyu, uh, Chair of the LGBT Caucus of the Democratic Party of Hawaii. Uh, we stand in full support of this resolution. Uh, we do want to, we have a couple of questions though. Um, we, we first want to say collecting this data is very important. We just want to make sure that once the data is collected, that it will be made public. That was unclear in the resolution. Um, if this is going to be a multi-year project, the LGBT caucus has concerns having PSD only working with one organization that is not established, established in statute to generate the questions. If this is going to be an ongoing basis request. This is due to the fact that the next administration could dissolve the working group or change the name and thereby require the legislature to amend this resolution to ensure this valuable input is sought by PSD. So, um, I'll be available for questions and thank you for hearing this resume. Mahalo. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up, I see Shana Lonoa, Lonoa Alexander in support. Please proceed. Laha Chair and committee members, my name is Shana Lonoa Alexander and I'm testifying as an individual in strong support of SCR uh, 27 and SCR 16. Um, I just wanted to note that as the juvenile courts are in charge of data collection and the DHS administrator runs the facility, um, they should be in charge of this data collection efforts. And in terms of funding, um, it's my understanding that the Sarah's Policy Project and the Sex and Gender Minority Work Group have been in conversation and could help with funding any necessary resources that uh, the, the department finds that they need. Um, oh. I also would like to share that last year, I was so frustrated with the state's response to COVID-19 decarceration, and I worried about the people inside of these prisons and jails who, were, who for extremely long periods of time uh, were going without visits and phone calls as the months went by. So I started to write to people inside. My first pen pal was a woman who, like me, is part of the LGBTQ community, grew up in the same towns I did, went to the same beaches, and frequented the same 7-Elevens for Musubis and Icy's. Yet her childhood was very different from mine. 
Okay. I had the support of my parents, aunties, uncles, grandparents, cousins, friends. Everybody loved me for who and all that I am, but she did not. In a report published by the Movement uh, Advancement Project in 2017, the percentage of incarcerated queer youth, queer and trans youth, is double of that of LGBTQ youth in uh, the general population. Family rejection, family instability, and poverty may result in houselessness uh, or time spent in the child welfare system where queer and trans youth frequently face stigma and, and discrimination. Once on the streets, youth are often locked up or criminalized for life-sustaining activities such as sitting in public, sleeping in public, coping with drug addiction, selling sex for money and food, and when you don't have a home, everything you do is in public, where public, where policing strategies and discrimination by law enforcement are at play. Research published in the pediatrics found that youth who reported identifying as LGBTQ um, were likely to be stopped by police, to be expelled from school, arrested, and convicted as juveniles and adults. Given that nearly 40% of incarcerated girls identify as, L as lesbian, gay, or bisexual, and 85 to 95% or 90% of incarcerated queer and trans youth are youth of color, meanwhile, uh, Hawaii continues to see such a disparate treatment and impact of Native Hawaiian, Pacifica, and Filipino youth incarcerated in the state, with the highest adult population of LGBTQ people in the country. It's crucial that any effort to change the way youth engage with the juvenile system uh, must consider the unique experiences of LGBTQ youth. I truly believe that young people who have been uh, court involved or incarcerated are experts on the justice system and what works and what doesn't. And a stepping stone to ensure these youth are given the opportunity to lead us uh, into a whole way where we're all safe and supported, that they must first be made visible and counted. Please pass this reso. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, nobody else having registered to testify on SCR 27. Those providing written testimony are as follows. Office of Hawaiian Affairs and Support Pride Work Hawaii's and Support Rainbow Family 808 and Support Planned Parenthood Votes Northwest and Hawaii and Support Dara Carlin in Opposition, Kevin Landers, Jackie Esser, Lorenzo Perillo, Itai Bradshaw Lang, Thaddeus Pham, Kevin Tomita, Jen Jenkins, Shana Lo uh, um, Sharde Freitas, Carrie Ann Shiroda, Kamaile Kama Maldonado, Tammy Whitney, Nikki Ann Yee, Kamuela Werner, all in support, Kunane Dreyer in support, William Kopp in support, Raylan Reno Yeomans in support, Eileen McKee in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SCR 27? Questions, witness um, members. Okay, chair has a question of Shana. Are you still on? Shana? Okay, so the big question I have here, Department of Human Services, which has been recently in the news for underfunding general assistance benefits, because they don't have money, is saying that this is going to cost us a lot of money. So you said something about funding. Who can provide funding for this data collection, Shana? So it's my understanding that the sex and gender minority group has been in conversation with the Department of Health, the DHS, um, and the CERES Policy Project, which has funded um, LGBTQ youth-related projects, um, and that they have been in conversation around this. Okay, so right now we have no commitment on the funding of this data collection. Um, any other questions, members? Okay, seeing none, we're going to move on to next up. It is SCR 218, SR 178, urging the Governor's Coordinator in Homelessness to include a representative from an LGBTQ plus focused nonprofit organization in the membership with the Hawaii Interagency Council on Homelessness to address the specific needs of LGBTQ plus youth across the state. Okay, first up, Scott Morishige testifying for Governor's Coordinator in Homelessness with comments. I see Scott. Oh, good afternoon, Chair. 
Um, I support the intent of this bill and stand my written testimony with comments. I note that legislation would be required to add an additional member um, to the HIC. I also wanted to note that um, I do work really closely with the Oahu Continuum of Care Partners in Care, which has worked on a number of different efforts over the past year, including um, a sexual and gender minority report um, analyzing the data of the point in time count for 2020, development of an LGBTQ um, toolkit, <coughs> as well as specific programs um, from the Youth Homeless Demonstration Project that better serve and expand services for LGBTQ youth in particular. Um, I stand my testimony and I'm available for any questions. Thanks, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, next up, Michael Galoyo Jr. for LGBT Caucus of the Democratic Party and support. Good afternoon again, Senators. Michael Galoyo here again for, on behalf of the LGBT Caucus. Um, the LGBT Caucus stands in full support of this resolution, and that's because LGBTQIA plus youth make up 40% of our unsheltered, unaccompanied minors. Whereas, depending on how you ask the question, LGBTQIA youth make up only 10% of the house community. So there's a great disparity between that, that we are all extremely overrepresented when it comes to uh, homeless youth. Uh, so that making sure that, the, that there is a seat at the table specifically for somebody, um, making, uh, otherwise if we don't have a seat at the table, we're on the menu. And it's nice to hear that other people are working with us and working and concerned about this, but it is, it is imperative that we actually have a voice at the table. Um, the LGBT caucus believes that there should be more direction given to how the LGBTQIA plus representative is selected. But given Scott's previous testimony that it will be actually require legislation to actually put an official seat on the thing, I guess that we'll, we can deal with that next time. But we do also would like to take this opportunity to thank Senator Michelle Lucha for introducing SCR 1218. And um, I'll be available for any questions. Mahalo. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Next, okay, nobody else having registered to testify. Okay, those who have provided written testimony are Michael Galoya Sr. for Rainbow Family 808 and support, Laurie Field for Planned Parenthood Votes Northwest in Hawaii and support, Jackie Yasser, Lorenzo Perillo, Itai Bradshaw Lang, Thaddeus Pham, Kevin Tomita, Shana Lonoea, Alexander, Tammy Whitney, Nikki Ann Yee, Kamuela Werner, Kunani Dreyer, Carla Allison, Eileen McKee, all in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SCR 218? Questions? Okay, none, we're moving on. SCR 229. Requesting the Hawaii Health Systems Corporation and SR 189. Requesting the Hawaii Health Systems Corporation to convene a task force to develop better mission driven hiring and training of interpreters employed at its facilities. Um, first up. <coughs> I don't think we have any testimony. Okay, excuse me. We don't have anyone registered to testify on this, but we do have written testimony from Hawaii Health Systems Corporation providing comments and Office of Language Access also um, providing comments. Sarah, I'm, I'm prepared to testify. I, I'm sorry if there was a misunderstanding. Okay, I, I don't have you registered here. Okay, but please proceed, Linda Rosen, for Hawaii Health Systems. Sorry if there was a misunderstanding. Good afternoon, Chair Son Buenaventura, Vice Chair Ihar, and members of the committee. I'm Linda Rosen, CEO of the Hawaii Health Systems Corporation, providing comments on this measure. Um, uh, HHSC uh, understands the challenges that those with limited English proficiency face when accessing uh, health care. And of course, uh, assistance with uh, interpretation is critical and is required by federal and state law. However, we don't provide uh, an, an on-site interpreters for these languages. We use uh, what you see described in my written testimony. We have specialized contracted services for competent uh, medical interpretation. And all hospitals use these services rather than 
uh, hiring on-site interpreters because to do so for all the different languages that, uh, that will come across is uh, cost prohibitive. That said, we do understand that there are challenges and barriers uh, to equal health care for those with limited English proficiency, and we would like to see improvements. However, given that we do not hire or train interpreters at all, uh, we don't feel that we are particularly well suited to lead this task force and that perhaps the Office of Language Access would be a better entity. So thank you very much for the opportunity to provide comments. Okay, thank you very much. Um, next up, I see Office of Language Access. Please um, proceed, Afrika. Good afternoon, good afternoon, Chair and member of the committee. So uh, we stand on our written testimony offering comment. And as we uh, indicate in our comment is that any every uh, cover entities have their flexibility in using what type of uh, language services that they deem appropriate for their services. For example, like a Dr. Rosen said that they use Marty within the video conference, which is allowable as long as uh, the quality and the, uh, the accuracy of the uh, provider is up to the standard. So we at the Office of Language Access, we don't have a say in what type of services the agency uh, are using. So, but for this task force, and you all know that uh, the office capacity, we not going to be able to lead the task force, but we are more than happy to participate if the chair uh, has this resolution and available for any comment or any question uh, the committee may have. Thank you, chair. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, nobody else, anybody else wishing to testify on SCR 229 SR 189? Questions, members? Seeing none. Okay, we're going to recess for decision making. Recess. Recalling the Chair um, Committee on Human Services 3.10 p.m. calendar for decision making, Chair's recommendation for HB 1284 is to amend the effective date to January 1, 2022 and add any tech amendments as necessary. Any questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. For the committee on, for members of the committee on human services that are present, we're voting on the chair's recommendation to pass House Bill 1284 with amendments. Chair uh, Buen San Buenaventura. Okay, aye. Vice Chair Vosai, Senator Acasio. Aye. Senator Misa Lucha. Aye. And Senator Favela is excused. The okay. recommendation is adopted. Thank you very much. So for HB 1237, Chair's recommendation is to change the effective date to make it effective upon approval and check amendments as necessary. Any questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. For the members present on Committee on Human Services, you heard the Chair's recommendation to pass a House Bill 1237 with amendments. Any reservations or objections to their recommendation? Otherwise, uh, I'll cast an aye vote for the members present. Recommendations adopted. Thank you very much. So for HB 381 HD2, Chair's recommendation is to adopt Community Association Institute's proposed amendment and make the effective date November 1, 2021. Any questions, comments? Okay, seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Any reservation or objections to the Chair's recommendation to pass HB 381 with amendments? Hearing none, the recommendation is adopted. Okay, for SCR 27 slash SR 16, um, it's obvious that all of the witnesses see that there is a need to collect data on LGBTQIA+. Um, however, because there's a need for appropriation and 
and this is trying times. Um, chair is recommending, I mean, chair is going to defer this indefinitely. Um, hopefully next time we will have some money to do the data collection. As far as SCR 218, SR 178, um, it's clear that we need to change the statute uh, before we could further move on this. And so chair's recommendation is to also defer that um, pending next year's bill to change the statute to add in an LGBTQ plus focused nonprofit organization as part of the Hawaii Interagency Council on Homelessness. So um, as far as SCR 229, SR 189, I'm sorry, are there any questions, comments? Okay. Comment. Yes, Chair. Senator Misalucha. Just wanted to thank those who testified in favor of this resolution and not to give up hope that we are um, going to hopefully work during the interim to uh, craft something that would address the uh, that particular statute that uh, is, is relevant to this conversation. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Senator Misalucha. So we look forward to um, that bill next year. So for SCR 229, SR 189, since neither the Hawaii Health Systems Corporation nor the Office of Language Access is willing to chair a working group, chair's recommendation is to defer indefinitely. Any questions, comments? Okay, we're on time. Adjourn. Okay, calling the um, joint hearing for Committee on Human Services and Committee on General of Government Operation 345 calendar present for Human Services is Vice Chair, is myself, Vice Chair Les, Senator Ihara, and on, vid, on remote are Senators Misalucha and Senators Acasio. Hmm. Senator, I mean, Chair. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm Sharon Moriwaki, Chair of the Government Operations Committee. Uh, and with me, Senator Gabbard. And I don't see anyone yet on from our committee, but uh, we have Vice Chair uh, Senator Dela Cruz, and uh, who's supposed to be coming on. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you very much. So for... Um calling on SCR 7 SR 5, requesting the Disability and Communications Access Board in collaboration with the Office of Enterprise Technology Services to convene a working group on accessible government documents. First up, Office of Enterprise Technology Services in support. Are you present? Aloha, we stand in our written testimony in support of the resolution. Thank you. Next up, um, Disability and Communications Access Board in support. We don't have DCAB? I said her that I'm present. Okay, thank you. Um, no one else having registered to testify, those who, are, who have provided written testimony are William Hoshijo, Hawaii Civil Rights Commission in support, Cheryl Kakazu, Park Office of Information Practices, comments, um, Douglas Moy says in support, Jacqueline Borsa in support, Hoku Burroughs in support, Tammy Robar in support, Katie Kime in support, and Lemke in support, Virgil Stinnett in support. Questions, Do any, does anyone else wishing to testify on SCR 7, SR 5? Okay, questions, committee members. Oh, uh, Madam Chair, this is uh, James, James Gashel, National Federation of the Blind. Okay, please proceed. Uh, I will. Uh, let me get the video going here, just one second. Okay, thank you very much. Um, actually, I did turn in written testimony, so I don't know. We'll have to investigate and see where it went. Um, uh, but this is a very, very important resolution. Glad to have the support of the um, 
DCAB and Office of Enterprise Technology not having accessible documents uh, for a person who is blind means we can't participate in government as the rest of you do. And it means that the door is closed in our face. I experienced this recently when trying to get a vaccination appointment and the appointment screen would not display to my screen reader. Now, let me just make sure you understand we're not talking about designing documents in any way different from what you normally would just that the content needs to be exposed to the technology that we use called a screen reader this is just behind the hood under the hood um, things that have to be done in building a document there's no additional cost it's training and education and awareness Finally, a couple of points on technology, I mean on terminology. In the resolution, the next to the last whereas, where it talks about advocacy organizations, I believe it's numbers 11 and 12, we suggest switching out the term um, for and using of, advocacy organizations of blind people and advocacy organizations of people who are deaf. This way we better ensure that it will be blind and deaf people who are able to participate in this working group. And finally, as to the name, National Federation of the Blind, it's not correctly stated in the resolution at the very end. It should be National Federation of the Blind, not National Federation for the Blind Hawaii chapter. Mahalo for your attention and consideration. Of the blind, okay. Okay, thank you very much. Anybody else wishing to testify um, on HSCR 7 SR5? Okay, seeing on questions, comments. I, I do have a question of DCAP. Anybody here from DCAP? No. no. Oh, okay. So I have a question of Office of Technology. Are you still there? Office of Technology. Um, oh, there. Here's there. Oh, hi, Doug Murdoch. Okay, so DCAB wrote in written testimony that they do not want to co-chair this working group. That they want to be, but they want to be part of it. Are you willing to be the sole chair <laughs> of this working group? Uh, well. It it would make more sense for them to be chair since this is their job jar. I'm, I'm happy to support. Okay, so um, it is usually not a, uh, we usually don't require departments to be chair if they do not want to be chair because otherwise it doesn't get done. So, um, so I'm assuming you are unwilling to be just playing chair. You're willing to co-chair with DCAB if DCAB is willing to be co-chair. Yes, that's correct. Okay, thank you very much. Um, James Gashel, it sounds like we're not gonna be able to pass this resolution as it is. Um, we need to work on DCAB for the next session or somehow appropriate them unless you have a solution to the chairmanship. Is National Federation... Well, how about... Well, I do. Um, how about making National Federation of the Blind of Hawaii the co-chair along with Office of Enterprise Technology? And, and I'm sure we can get DCAB's... Uh, participation. I, I really seriously mean that. Um, we would be pleased to uh, to co-chair along with Office of Enterprise Technology. Um, okay. We, we have the expertise to do it and, and we'd be um, thrilled to have the chance. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to defer this until the next, um, when's the next time? Thursday. On Thursday. And the reason is we're going to need to see the legalities of having a non-governmental entity as right. a co-chair right. of this. 
Um, okay, so. And chair, Chair, what we could do if you're going to defer decision making is check with DCAB and see if there's any other alternative um, yes, to, to co chair, because at least it's a government agency. Yes. You know. DHS, maybe, I don't know. No, they're no. not willing to coach oh, okay. another work, any <laughs> okay, other working okay. group. <laughs> okay. Okay. There's, there's never been a, a problem with a non government chairing a, a, a legislative task force. There's many okay, examples. Okay, yeah, okay. So that's not so a, an issue at all. I think we should check with DCAP because they want to oh, be yeah. on the working on group, that, but they, yeah. don't, you know, they don't have staff to yeah, chair. It's it. a request also. They don't have to do it, it's a resolution. Okay, so you know what? We, we will discuss this in the breakout room for decision making as to what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. um, anybody else wishing to testify on SCR 7, SR 5? Any other questions, members? Okay, seeing none, moving on to SCR 219, SR. Um, what's the SR of 219? Excuse me. SR 179. Basically, urging the Executive Office of Aging to form a working group and develop a plan for outreach to Kapuna to remediate a lack of digital literacy, broadband access, and computer equipment. First up, testifying for Department of Executive Office on Aging, Carolyn Cadirao, comments. Carolyn, she's not on. Okay, next up, Peggy Mirzoa. Um, testifying for Aloha Care and support. Next up, okay, no one else having registered to testify. Those providing written comments are Learning Bond, um, Deborah Bond Upson and support, Larry Vere um, in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on SCR 219, SR 179? Seeing none, members, we cannot ask anybody any questions because <laughs> they're not here. Okay, let's um, recess for decision making. Recalling the 345 calendar of the joint session of the Committee on Human Services and Government Operations for decision making. For SCR 7, SR 5, Chair's recommendation is to amend the title and the contents to replace the D Disability and Communications Access Board with the, nation, with the National Federation of the Blind as a co-chair and um, insert a representative of the D Disability and Communication Access Board as a member of the working group. We're also going to change the, um, any reference to the National Federation for the Blind into the National Federation of the Blind of Hawaii. Any any comments, questions? Seeing none, Vice Chair for oh, the so vote. Just, Chair, I think the other the other amendment request is advocacy. All of that for the blind or for the deaf should be changed to of the blind. And your task. No, members. not of the of the deaf. I, I oh. believe I, I've. Said I thought that. he said all the advocacy groups should be of instead of for. But. So, changing all references. To national, that refers to National Federation for the Blind and Hawaii chapter to National Federation of the Blind of Hawaii. All references. Um, yeah, any questions? Nope. Okay, with those amendments, any comments, questions? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, the for the Committee on Human Services, we're voting on the Chair's recommendation, <coughs> both Chair's recommendations, to pass uh, SCR 7 and SR 5. We'll take that in one vote. Uh, Chair San Buenaventura. Aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Ocasio. I hear her move, but. Uh, aye. Okay, there we go. Uh, Senator Misa Lucha. Aye. 
And Senator Vavella is excused. The recommendation is adopted for both resolutions. Uh, for the Government Operations Committee, same recommendation. Chair votes aye. Uh, Vice Chair De La Cruz. Aye. Senator Gavin? Aye. Senator Favela? Senator Chang is here too. Yeah, he, he, I got him. Is Senator Favela on? No. Excuse, recommendation adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so after much discussion on SCR 219 slash SR 179, Chair's recommendation is to pass as is any questions, comments? Okay, seeing none. Um, Vice Chair for the vote. Okay, for the Committee on Human Services, uh, we're voting on the Chair's recommendation to pass SCR 219 and SR 179. Any reservations or objections? The recommendation is adopted. Okay, GBO. Okay, are uh, you going to gavel out or gavel No, in? you have to get Oh, oh sorry, oh, okay. It's the same recommendation for the Government Operations Committee for SCR 219, SR 179. Chair votes aye. Uh, Senator De La Cruz. <coughs> Senator De La Cruz. Yeah, with, um, I think, four members present. Um, any reservations? Any objections? Recommendation and done. Okay, thank you. We are adjourned. Okay, you get the call now. Okay. Gaveling in for uh, the joint hearing of Government Operations and Human Services Committees. Uh, we're going to move on to the one measure before us, SCR 212 and SR 175, requesting the auditor to assess the social and financial effects of mandating coverage of annual mental health screening. Uh, we have no one testifying in person or no written testimony uh, uh, this meets this measure meets the requirements of section 20 through 51. Uh, so uh, we're going to move right into recommendations, um, decision making. Chair recommends we pass as is with technical non-substantive amendments. Uh, chair votes. Uh, any questions? Anyone? No. Chair votes aye. Members. Uh, Vice Chair De La Cruz. SCR 212. SR 175 recommendations to pass with amendments. Uh, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chen. Aye. Senator Gavin. Aye. Senator Pavella. Excuse. Recommendation adopted. Okay, for um, Human Services Committee, same recommendation. Vice Chair for the vote. The recommendation is to pass SCR 212 and SR 175 unamended. Yes. Uh, Chair no, Sanders. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm oh. sorry. Thank you. Just checking to see. Hey, uh, uh, Chair uh, San Buenaventura. Aye. Rec uh, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Ocasio. Aye. Senator Misa Lucha. Aye. And Senator Favela is excused. The recommendation is adopted for both resolutions. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this is no one other business. We are Thank you adjourned. for being efficient. Thank you. Adjourned.